Ngaleki. One big issue with our vending machine controller so far is that it requires the user to manually flip a clock switch as each coin is being deposited. There are multiple ways we can automate this. In this video, we will explore an asynchronous approach using a one-shot device. The big puzzle in the current design is how to ensure that the register automatically updates just one time when any one coin gets deposited. A reasonable approach is shown here. Notice this OR gate, which accepts inputs of any coin signal and its output serves as the register clock input. The OR gate ensures that any of the three coins would be counted. If all the coin signals are low, and then one of them jumps high, the OR gate output jumps high. This provides the needed positive edge for the clock input to the register. Recall that a clock input does not have to be a true clock that cycles up and down regularly. Any jump from low to high on this input activates the register to update. It seems reasonable, so let's try it. I flip a dime high, the adder output updates to 2, but the register value does not change. Why do you think this is? The trouble is the timing. In a 7400 series chip, the propagation delay through the single OR gate would be about 10 nanoseconds, whereas this 4-bit adder would be about 80 nanoseconds there are many cascading gates packed inside of it. Therefore, the positive edge on the clock input occurs very quickly, and the register does update, but it updates to the same value. The adder is still outputting zero when the positive edge occurs. It isn't until many nanoseconds later that the adder output changes. This is when we need the positive edge, but it is already passed. No matter which coin signal I flip, the register is not able to update. Although this attempt failed, a useful idea from it is that this OR gate tells the register when any coin has been input, after which the register should update. Keep this idea in mind. Another promising idea is to go directly synchronous. Just plug in a clock, to the clock port. Let's see what happens when I add a dime. The register updates, but then it updates again and again and again. On every clock cycle, that single dime is being counted as a new dime. In an ideal world, the workaround to this would be simple. Just make sure the coin signals are held high for the same amount of time as one clock period. We can easily adjust the clock period, right? Yes, we can, but we can't guarantee consistent times that the coin signals are activated. Three different coin sensors will have three different delay characteristics. Also, depending on humidity, griminess of the coin, or other environmental factors, a deposited coin may roll slower or faster. There needs to be some sort of a connection between the input signals and the clock input. There are two broad categories of approaches we can use to solve this, asynchronous or synchronous. Later on, we'll work through a synchronous approach, which involves designing a simple finite state machine to serve as the clock controller. But in this video, we'll take an asynchronous approach. No clock, but instead a one-shot device used to give us enough delay. Recall that flip-flops are called bistable devices. This is because they can be held low or held high indefinitely until they are instructed to change. A one-shot is a monostable device, meaning it has one stable state, but it can temporarily be put into its unstable state. After a controlled amount of time has elapsed, it automatically returns to its stable state. For the one-shot that we will be using, the stable state is Q equals zero. If the trigger is never activated, then Q will equal zero forever. But once that trigger input is activated, Q jumps to one and stays there for a set pulse width. After that time, it drops back down to zero 
where it remains until it is triggered again. In physical devices, this starting delay is simply the propagation delay through the underlying circuit, and it's relatively tiny. But the more significant pulse width can be controlled by tying in various capacitors or resistors. In our simulation, it's even simpler than that. We'll just type in the pulse width that we want. How does this help in our vending machine? Remember how the OR gate approach failed because the clock signal changed faster than the adder. What we needed was a long enough delay after the coin was dropped. This is what the one shot can provide. Specifically, we need a delayed positive edge. This will come from the Q prime output as seen in the timing diagram. The Q waveform has a delayed negative edge, but Q prime shows a delayed positive edge. And as we noted in the OR gate attempt, the register should change and thus the one shot triggered if any coin is deposited. This takes us to this completed circuit. Pause the video and explore what was added. Hint, it's all in this top left corner. There are only two new components. The OR gate output will jump from 0 to 1 only when a new coin is added, and thus trigger the one shot. The Q' prime output of the one shot is then used as the register clock input. This plus 5 volt signal is just in place because we will never need to clear this one shot. Let's see it in action. The first thing to do is to set the pulse width of the one shot. I do this by clicking on the device, then the simulation tab, then simulation params. The delay can be left at one nanosecond. The pulse width needs to be longer than the delay through the 4-bit adder. I'll pick 100 nanoseconds. Note that I have the simulation speed very low, so we can observe the delays. Now I'll input a nickel. Notice how the adder updates to 1, then a little later the register updates. The register updates only after a positive edge leaves the Q' prime output of the one shot. Let me show the binary values so you can really see this. Now I drop the nickel switch low. The adder output changes, but the register isn't told to update because the one shot isn't triggered. Now, keep your eye on the one shot output. I add another nickel and Q prime drops low briefly. When it jumps high again, the register is allowed to change. There are two other important things to note here. If I try adding another coin, like this dime, the OR gate output is still held at a constant high. Therefore, this one shot is not triggered and the register doesn't change. This matches our early design spec that only one coin can be added at a time. Also, you have probably noticed that the adder output changes again after the register changes. This is because the adder is constantly adding A and B together. So, the adder changes, the register changes, and the adder changes again. But the second change doesn't matter because it is not being clocked into the register. This one shot is an effective and simple asynchronous device that can be used to add timing delays within a sequential circuit, which are sometimes necessary to allow enough processing time. To paraphrase a famous song, you only get one shot, do not miss your chance to update your register to the correct values.